Sonicy Kenpachi, the epitome of a Chad. You are technically correct. The best kind of correct. This man exuberates the energy that leaves men on their knees. His overwhelming pressure, even before he knew the name of his Zompok Toe, was world renowned. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's doing me! He was the first ever person that didn't even need a bunkai to become a captain. Why? Because he's built different. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! I think we can all agree that Kenpachi is absurdly strong. Literally the embodiment of what it means to live on the edge at all times. I mean, for some of us, it would be getting an F in the maths test and then telling our parents. For others, it's telling your wife you don't have any money left. But for Kenpachi, if there is a battle near him, you can expect him to put his life on the line. And that's because fighting against the stronger foe makes him feel the most alive. Much like Ichigo, Kenpachi built his reputation through sheer raw strength, showcased by his insane level of Ryatsu, which he limits by containing it with his eye patch. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this man is so powerful that he nerfs himself to have a good fight. Just think about that shit. Just think about it. Seriously, Kenpachi has the power, the strength. He is a literal Chad amongst Chads. I've been watching Bleach since I was a 12 year old boy, and I I fell in love with this man. But there was always something that was missing about him. Waiting years upon years. Gosh damn, I'm old now. I even have a wife and kid. Oh, damn. I have been waiting for just this very thing to be revealed in the anime. This <laughs> Bonkai. I know what you guys are thinking. So ABD, why did he take so long to get his Bonkai? I thought you needed it to become a cat. Well, my fellow students, let's go back to memory lane, starting from the very beginning. When we were all 12 year olds, enjoying the show on our big ass CRT TVs. Zadaki became a captain when he killed the previous Kenpachi of the 11th squad. Even after such accomplishments, Kenpachi's relationship with Zompak Toe is well complicated to say the least. As his fight with Ichigo illustrated, this battle started with Ichigo trying his hardest to cut down Kenpachi. Of course, Ichigo failed to even dent him at point blank range as his blade was too blunt in penetrating Kenpachi's Ryatsu. And if that wasn't enough, Kenpachi straight up just points his Zompak Toe, slicing through Zengetsu like butter. You know, With his bullshit. Zompak Toe cracked and his body bleeding severely, Ichigo was done for, if not for Zengetsu activating Ichigo protagonist's powers. You know, Ichigo gets pushed into his inner world where he goes up against his inner hollow self and wins, which gives him his second win to bring down Kenpachi. Ichiko's initial L helped him evolve his attitude towards his blade. He even highlights this, criticizing himself for not knowing anything more than Zengetsu's name, making him no better than Kenpachi, who didn't care to learn anything about his Zenpakuto. This is a really important hint to just show us how strong Kenpachi could be. If he just called out to his Zenpakuto, as in reality, he already has a deep understanding with her. But just like the barbarian he is, Kenny solely focused on himself and thought indulging in such actions to be a waste of time and energy. However, even Zengetsu mentioned that he could hear Kenpachi Zompakuto screaming its name towards its ignorant master. So once Ichigo had regained his strength, he managed to somehow defeat Kenpachi, making him question his own decisions regarding his blade. Kenpachi finally attempted to listen to his blade for the first time, but he couldn't hear a thing. Telling Osta, it's not that easy to understand Zompok Toes, but his fight with Ichigo had made him realize the importance of having a name, since neither he nor his adorable little lieutenant Yachiru had names in the past. Just like living beings, Zompok Toes respond to their names and help their masters fight. Yachiru even says that Kanpachi's fight was a 2v1 because Ichigo was relying on his Zompok Toe whilst Kanpachi wasn't. Kenpachi Kenpachi didn't even have a Shikai release. This made Kenpachi realize that he wanted to become stronger, planting the thought that someday he could do that with the help of his Zompok Toe. But unaware to him, he had always known and understood his Zompok Toe. <laughs> well, at least a part of it. Because even if Kenpachi couldn't hear his Zompok Toe, he understood Yachiru on a deeper yes. level. What? What the fuck? 
the cute kid who was supposedly even stronger than Yumichika and Ikaku, the same kid who stuck with Kenpachi as long as either of them could remember, turned out to be his sword. You guys have officially made me lose my marbles! From the very beginning, there was something off with the way Yachiru was portrayed to hint us towards the fact that she was more than just the bubbly wise captain. For one, despite being a young child when Kenpachi found her, she remembered their first meeting in airy detail. She even mentioned that before Kenpachi, she had no name or parents and hadn't even seen anything in colors apart from bloody red. Now to be fair, this was a crazy hint and foreshadowing because we already know through the royal god and the creator of the Zompok Toes, Oetsu, that Kampachi stole his Zompok Toe from some dead guy all those years ago. If Yachiru was a Zompok Toe whose name was never called upon, of course she would have only seen the color red in the midst of battle. But there is more to uncover. In a way, the spirit of Yachiru also represented the childhood and the youth Kampachi had been missing. Before meeting Yachiru, Kampachi was a rogue child who would create great mounds of corpse in order to survive and fight battles with strong rivals. He was even nuts enough to go against a freaking Gote 13 captain all because he seemed strong. After this fight, Kenpachi limited himself from achieving his highest level of power, all because he subconsciously felt he would lose sight of the only person who could fight to give him a tough competition. And this mattered to Kenpachi because all he knew and understood was battle. It gave him an an endless joy and when faced against an opponent as strong as Unohana, he achieved the zenith of adrenaline and happiness which he didn't want to lose. This is when he met Yachiru, a young girl with blank origins. She wasn't afraid of Kenpachi's blade at all and because of that he took a liking to her. He named her Yachiru in honor of Unohana. His love for the battlefield brought him closer to his Zampak toe without him even realizing. A a crucial step for any soul reaper to become strong. Their bond and relationship is proved time and time again from the fact that Yachiru referred to Kenpachi as Kenchan and always served as a guide to him. In fact, when Noitora was charging at Yachiru, she pointed out that Kenpachi gets very angry if anyone tries to harm her. So it's quite clear with Kubo's foreshadowing that Kenpachi must have been subconsciously semi-aware of Yachiru's existence being related to his Zanpakuto. But his thirst for a good battle always kept him ignorant of his Zompokto's true nature. However, just to clarify, Yachiru isn't Kenny Zompokto's full embodiment. Rather, there's more to it. Kubo actually commented about the complexity that Yachiru is, stating that she represents a form of Kenpachi's Bankai that was separated from its main body. But how and why? Well, to get a bit of understanding, let's go back to the steps of achieving a Bankai. As Yurichi told Ichigo, the first thing a Soul Reaper has to do is manifest the Zompok Toe's spirit and without even realizing it, Kenpachi had already done that. This is similar to how Stark and Linanette, Linanette? Lininette, I can never pronounce her name. Lininette were generally two individuals but Stark's resurrection turned Lininette into his pistol. Similarly, Yachiru gained the power of a Shinigami upon receiving the name from Kenpachi and also got her own Zompok Toe. A special trait among Zompok Toes is that even if they are not called by their real or full name, they can still aid their masters but only to a certain extent. This could be because of their stubbornness or just because the master is ignorant. A good example of this is Renji's Zompok Toe, Zobimaru. It did not recognize or respect Renji's power so it gave him a false name for his Bankai which was Hihio Zobimaru. <laughs> yes, sadly this dude seriously needed to prove himself to everyone. Where's Ichiko? <laughs> and then Byakuya. <laughs> and then even his own Zampok doll. <laughs> Basically, Renji did not know his Bankai's real name until the Thousand Year Blood War arc when Zabimaru finally acknowledged him, allowing Renji to use the full power of Soul Zabimaru. Similarly, Kenpachi wasn't able to tap into the full power of his own Zanpakuto and due to this, he was unable to share his Ryotsu with his sword, which in turn explains why his Zanpakuto always appeared chipped and worn out. But since he had given the name Yachiru 
due to a part of his Zompakuto's Bunkai, it aided him to only an extent. That is until Kenpachi's fight against Unuhana. Kenpachi's acknowledgement and conversation with Yachiru manifested the spirit made sure that he could still fight, although never at his full potential. Because as Zangetsu says, one can only hear the Zompakuto's name when they are ready. Thus, when Kenpachi finally expressed his desire to hear his Zampakuto's name in chapter 114, Yachiru replied that they will grow stronger together. She also says Kenpachi is the strongest and that he was her everything ever since the day they met. This is not just sweet, but it also tells us how close Kenpachi and Yachiru were as a wielder of a Zampakuto. However, as we mentioned, Yachiru isn't Kenpachi's true sword, neither its name. But Things were soon about to change. Seeing how insanely strong Kenpachi was even without his Bankai, the newly appointed captain commander, Shunsui, first order was for Unohana to push Kenpachi even further beyond. Yes, this meant that one of the two captains would die because the only way Kenpachi would get his Bankai was at the brink of death. Unohana was the perfect opponent to do this. She killed and healed Kenny as many times as required to thoroughly rattle him into listening to his Zompokuto. After this awakening, he was so busted that he instantly killed Unohana with his true strength. Kenpachi then heard a unfamiliar voice calling out to him. Since he failed to recognize her, this voice told him that I who have been by your side, longer than anyone, closer than anyone, always watching over you. It is a pleasure to meet you, Kenpachi Zaraki. It was none other than Nozarashi, the true manifestation of his Zanpakuto. The name of Kenpachi Zanpakuto itself unravels the mystery behind it. Nozarashi means weather beaten one or beaten by the weather, a representation of how the blade itself is worn out due to many battles. But another Another meaning of Nozarashi is exposed in a field, which is a motif of skulls, bones, and skeletons. We can see that Yachiru always has a skull or bone motif like her hairpin. She also says in chapter 114 that she could have been easily stomped upon and killed before she met Kempachi. Moreover, if we think about it, she first appeared in front of Kempachi amongst a pile of dead people. Interestingly, when Nozarashi as she talks to Kenpachi, we also see a frame of Yachiru tagging along, telling us that Nozarashi really had been beside Kenpachi all this time. Yachiru was just part of Nozarashi's Bankai since, according to Kubo, the true embodiment of this blade is that of a grown woman. Nozarashi's Shikai is an older woman, while the Bankai is similar to Yachiru's appearance. This explains the entirety of Yachiru's existence as the tiny girl we all come to love. Kenpachi gained his Shikai and Bankai within the same day, which was a master move by Kubo. Kenpachi needed a power-up to keep him relevant as the strongest brute power Shinigami in Soul Society because everyone else was getting power-ups left and right at this point. But it would have been against his straightforward fighting style for him to learn Kendo, so there was only one thing that could shoot him up to the top and it was Bankai. The build-up had been in the works for nearly 500 chapters because all of us knew that he'd hit Bankai eventually. And this was just the time for Kenpachi to realize his full potential because he had to face extremely strong opponents like Gremi and Gerard of the Stern Ridders. While Kenpachi was fighting Unohana, Yachiru was up against Gremi, getting slapped up because this guy had the power to literally change reality itself with his imagination. This power was so busted that he just turned Yachiru's bones into cookies. Now, I'm not joking, he actually turned it into cookies. However, he could not imagine himself beating Kenpachi. Gurmi fired guns, he fired a rocket, he even tried to squish Kenpachi with giant hands, but the captain of Chad's came out unscathed. As a last ditch effort, Gurmi summoned a whole ass meteor, which only excited Kenpachi that he had found something new to cut. So he called upon Nozarashi, destroying the meteor with just his 
is Shikai. Now, using some anime bullshit science, we can actually figure out just how much strength Kenpachi used here. According to a professor of mechanical engineering and material science at Johns Hopkins University, to destroy a meteor that is 20 kilometers in diameter, you would need about 200 gigatons of TNT or 10 million Hiroshima nukes. What? But even if we put the asteroid summoned by Grammy at 1 kilometers in diameter, Kenpachi used 500,000 nukes worth of power to destroy it, and that's a conservative estimate. Moving to Kenpachi's Bankai, we witness its power during his fight against Gerard. Gerard had the power to grow stronger and bigger the more he regenerated from his injuries. When Kenpachi arrived at the scene, Gerard had already grown to a size that could wipe out the entire Soul Society if he were to fall from the Soul King's Palace and you know Kenpachi beats him so I'm just saying Kenpachi is a Soul Society buster level alright yeah but Kenpachi said size doesn't matter and released his Zanpak dough. however unlike with Grammy it was evident Gerard was a different beast as he still slapped up Kenpachi after he took off his eye patch right as Kenny got slammed into the ground he saw Yichiru's image she told him that he has to keep going and to use her properly to cut everything with this motivation, Kenpachi had become a literal demon activated against Bankai. He straight up bit off Gerard's fist before ripping off his entire arm. Then he cleaved Gerard in half with his Bankai. Honestly, this instinctual power was foreshadowed by Kenpachi in his fight against Tosin all the way back in the Soul Society arc, where in pitch black darkness with zero feeling, he caught Tosin. Now, though Kenpachi's Nozorashi in its Shikai form is a great axe war cleaver, when he activates his Bankai, the change to his sword isn't too significant. Rather, it becomes shorter and jagged. The major change is actually seen with Kenpachi himself, where his skin turns red and he gains multiple black markings across his face and horns on his forehead, causing him to resemble an Oni. Upon activation, Kenpachi's Bankai releases a huge wave of energy powerful enough to level nearby buildings and he's able to slice shit up from a huge distance. The only negative I would think of is, well, he loses his mind. It's evident that it is a power to be wary of as Hitsugaya and Byakuya backed off upon seeing it. Kenpachi seems to lose all consciousness in this mode and becomes a killing machine going berserk. In fact, by the end of this fight, Kenpachi lost an arm because Nozorashi said she had released too much power than Kenpachi could handle. Against Gerard's mammoth body and defense, since Kenpachi's Bankai had effectively slashed through in the most deadly manner. Yachiru was right. There was nothing Kenpachi couldn't cut if he wielded her properly. We can only imagine how strong Kenpachi would get if he started training with his Bankai. It would definitely make Nozorashi's Bankai the most dangerous one in the Soul Society. The end of Bleach doesn't really follow up on the level Kenpachi gets to. However, it's obvious Kenpachi's control of his Bankai will become more solidified. Just imagine Nozorashi saying her own power power is too great to the point of Kenpachi's chat of chads not being able to bear it. Like what? His arm literally popped off due to the raw power of his Bankai. Oh my god. That just showcases that we have yet to witness Nozorashi's full potential. But if you want to learn more about Kenpachi and Bleach, then click the video shown on screen right now because it's another banger.